Hi, I have the Sorol SVO1 Pro with me today. I was really surprised or rather impressed when I reviewed this printer. First I unboxed the printer, set it up quickly, took about 10 minutes, did some prints, calibration cube and so on. And then I printed a 3D Benchy to see the printer settings such as speed, retraction or acceleration. But just look at these layers. I don't need to do anything to this. I honestly didn't expect it to perform so well. But of course there are reasons for that. So let's start the review. The SVO1 Pro has a rectangular aluminum heated bed of 280mm on the X axis and 240mm on the Y axis with a maximum print height of 300mm. This bed can go up to 110 degrees and has insulation foam underneath. Usually we see a square bed on most printers but here's a rectangular and I think this 280mm X axis has to do with the fact that the gantry is fixed from the side and not from the bottom. So as you see there's a 40mm extra space added to the bed which is the width of these vertical extrusions and it's 280mm which is nice. We see this magnetic flexible surface as the printing surface. This surface is not PEI, it is slightly rough and quite flexible. It's also very good at sticking. So you know these are usually cool things, things like not sticking or warping usually don't happen with these. However, of course this surface can also be replaced with the PEI sheet. So when I look at the print head, there is a pancake stepper motor here and this motor is honestly extremely hot right now. I can't even hold my hand on it, probably needs a little voltage adjustment. Right in front of it is the direct drive extruder and the hot end. This is a full metal extruder, all these parts you see here are all metal which is nice because they will not wear out easily and I can't see the hot end right now but let's see ok the extruder is metal but not the hot end this is a PTFE lined hot end with silicone sacks just below is a standard 0.4mm nozzle the fact that the hot end is PTFE lined means that we cannot go high temperatures so I think the maximum temperature that we can go will be around 245 to 50 degrees and at these temperatures PLA, ABS, TPU, wood and almost likely PETG filament can be printed, which I think it's a quiet enough. There's a fan duct at the bottom, and this fan duct is closing the nozzle around well, and which makes it quite difficult to see the print. I don't like this side of the rack drives, but most of them are unfortunately like this. The print is barely visible, but this is not so important for me because we can get way better results in flexible filament with this direct drive than Bowden extruder, and we can easily print flexy things. By the way I am quite happy with this fan duct, the print quality is pretty good. One of the most different things on the print head is this CR Touch leveling probe. Yes, this is Creality branded CR Touch and this probe is quite good and reliable. It measures from 16 different points to automatic bed leveling and another good thing, you can even see these measurements on the screen interface. I don't know what I can use this for, but I really enjoyed seeing these values. Besides that, the printer has bed springs and for the leveling, I do first manual leveling from the corners with a paper, then I start automatic bed leveling. In this way, we can get quite accurate results with manual leveling and then auto bed leveling. And I think with this probe, bed springs and magnetic surface, getting a perfect first layer will be quite easy and smooth. The SVO1 Pro not only has the CR touch, but it also comes out of the box with a 32-bit motherboard from Creality. It's exactly Creality version 4.2.2 motherboard and I think that's why the print quality will be quite good. Also TMC2208 stubborn motor drivers were used on the main board which means that that strange alien sounds will not come from these motors. And I just saw this now, here we have a 24 volt power supply and this is Creality branded as well. By the way the first print is just finished. There doesn't seem to be any problem, the layers look good, but it looks like the lead screws need a little bit of help. Now I'll tighten a few screws and print another one. This time it will be orange. Ok while we are printing, let's take a look at the screen interface. The first thing I want to say is that the interface is really unusual and the touch feeling is nice. Not crappy, detects in one go. Also as you see it's very colorful. On the top right there is a night mode and can be changed it that way. I don't know how necessary it is, but I've never seen this kind of thing in any printer until now. Ok there are basically three options in the interface, the first one is the section with the settings like motion and positions, in the middle there are options for heating, leveling and printing, 
The last option has things like filament change or advanced settings. And I think this advanced settings options is quite useful. Because you know when you want to change something like a model step or speed, you usually have the connected printer to the computer. But here we have all of them in the interface. And one of the best things is that the printer comes stuck with features like linear advance and PID tuning. Most printers don't have these settings in the interface, which I think is too bad. Okay, it looks really good this time. Yes, I think it's a perfect print. This was printed at 0.16mm layer height and I can barely see the layers. That's really good printing. I also printed this 3D Banshee which is 0.2mm layer height and look at that quality. I haven't done any tuning so far on the printer. I just opened the box, printed two calibration cubes and then this bench is the third one and certainly this is the one of the best benches I have ever printed. Look at that, cooling, layers, retraction, all of them are perfect. This print made me really happy. Ok, let's continue. We have also an option in the interface to change the filament during the printing and I'm right now trying a multicolor print using this. We'll see how that turns out. In the meantime, let's look at the double Z axis. Ok, we have a two stubborn motors here for the Z axis and they are connected to a single driver on the motherboard and as you can see these two motors are not connected by a belt. Obviously it would be better if there was a belt, but nothing to have a belt is not a big problem. Because I think the purpose of the belt is to make the motors work synchronously. I don't think these motors will cause any problems and so far everything is fine. Besides that, these lead screws and brass nuts provide the linear motion and these carriages look pretty standard as well. Ok, we looked at many features of the printer and finally we have here a filament sensor and belt tensioners. And now let's move on to the prints. Ok, so this is the first calibration cube. I printed another one in orange because the white one was a bit rough. Then I printed this 3D Benchy, which is one of the best 3D Benchies I have ever printed. I think it's a perfect print, even though there is no tuning on the printer. Then this multicolored astronaut, there's no problem where the color transition is, like a double extruder. I printed this hour hang egg and it looks pretty good actually. This is Goku from Dragon Ball. It doesn't look very good I know, because the support settings were very bad and removing them was really hard. But the layers look good. These are the rotating rings. As you see it's very smooth. The tolerances are good and the color transition looks good again. And the last print is just finished. This is a fidget keychain, just like the previous one, it looks nice. This was the Sowol SV01 Pro and this printer made me really happy with the print quality. Probably be one of the printers I will use all the time. So thanks for watching, see you next time.